What's the biggest difference between uh, biodynamic farming and organic farming? Regeneration, mm. right? So really it comes down to regeneration. So if you want to regenerate land, all right, organic farming, I'm not saying it's a bad process, right? It's still good, all right? Okay. It's just, it's it's where where we want to start, at, right? And basically the, the issue is it's not going to allow you to regenerate that soil on a consistent basis and make better quality food and better land and, you know, reduce, it won't, it won't, you know, it will, it will have some effect. I mean, I want to say that because, you know, people are like, what are you saying? Zero effect? No, but it's not going to be fully regenerative. All right. And that is a major difference between the two. Yes. And organics is still not using the harsh, harsh, harsh chemicals, right? The they're, they're not, they're not, but, so. but in biodynamics, it's very particular you must use your 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 farm is an ecosystem you must mm -hmm. live within that farm nature is your your way of healing right biodynamic farming is one of the oldest if not the oldest form of certified verified regenerative farming in the world dating back to over 100 years when Rudolf Steiner was showing people how to build their soil and how to rebuild their soil, how to make it healthy when it had stopped growing their vegetables and stuff that they were growing as well as it had before. And it's gaining traction around the world. It's also gaining traction in the marketplace. In different parts of the world, it's quite well known. Like in Europe, for example, a lot of people look for Demeter certified products. In North America, however, it's still pretty new in its infancy. Well, Dr. Mercola and his company, Mercola Market, is changing that. Mercola has launched a brand new product line called SoulSpring, where it's all certified Demeter products. That means they're sourcing their products from certified Demeter farmers and packaging it and certifying it Demeter from everything from supplements to foods like olive oil and vinegars to sheets and towels and leggings. It's super profound and super exciting because the more we can amplify and support regenerative farming and gardening as consumers, as end users, the bigger impact we have on this planet. Ryan Bolin is the Chief Business Officer of Mercola Market. He is helping roll out the Soul Spring brand. He's helping connect farmers with a farm mentor to help them transition to Demeter certified and biodynamic farming. He is helping with product innovation. Um, he loves connecting farmers to ways that they can feel good about the products that they grow and feel good about uh, building beautiful, rich, healthy living soil. In this conversation with Ryan, we explore what biodynamics is, how farmers are making this shift and transition towards biodynamics when they are uh, organic certified or when they're conventional farming with chemicals. We look at why it's so important that we make this shift towards regenerative agriculture, what farmers can do to take those first steps to learn more about biodynamics and start to practice biodynamic farming. We talk about how biodynamics is not all woo, but it's actually learning how to work with nature. Ryan also shares his tips for farmers who are wanting to work with companies and sell their products to companies, what they can do, the questions they need to ask, and what's most important when making that leap of selling directly to a company who's looking for products that they grow. I'm Natalie Forsbauer, founder and editor-in-chief of Heart and Soil Magazine. I am deeply honored to be having these conversations with leaders, scientists, experts, farmers in the regenerative space. If you enjoy these conversations, then please share them with your friends, like this video, subscribe to this channel. And if you want to support this channel, support Heart and Soil, you can subscribe to the magazine for just $39.99 a year. You make yourself an amazing day and enjoy this conversation with Ryan Boland. Hello. Hello, Ryan. It's great to see you and meet you. Great to meet you as well. How are you? 
I'm great. Thanks. I'm really good. Thank you. Thanks for carving out the space for us to have this conversation. Yeah, no problem. No problem. Happy to happy to speak with you. Awesome. Is there anything in particular that you want to touch on around um, Mercola or um, biodynamics or what you're working on? This was a journey basically about six years ago with Mercola and we could talk about personal journey as well, but awesome. uh, we wanted to get into, you know, Dr. Mercola has been writing about regenerative agriculture for years. People don't realize that. We actually went back. I mean, he was doing battles with Joe Salatin back in the day when, when uh, you know, he just started talking about his way of doing, you know, you know regenerative agriculture, um, you know, and basically he went into like, you know, dealing with the Savory Institute, all these different, you know, different places. You know, in 2014 is when I actually joined the company. Um, I had the opportunity to join a a meeting that was held in New York City um, with only a few people in that room. Um, and that room was basically the Rodale Institute just came out with a 30 year study showing that they can reduce carbon emissions by about 70%. And I think it was, was it, it was up to, I don't know, it was pretty crazy. You know, it was an unbelievable study. Tom Newmark was part of it, who used to own New Chapter and uh, Ronnie Cummings from the Organic Consumer Association. And what's interesting is I was one of the people in that room with my CEO, Steve Rye from Mercola, uh, we represented Mercola and their Bronner was in there. There were all different avenues. And basically where that, that meeting went was Vidanya Shiva was coming into town to launch this at, at, you know, at a press conference to basically launch the aspect of regenerative agriculture and how it can make a change to the world and, you know, how it can do so many different things. And, you know, at that moment in time, it was, okay, what are we going to do at Mercola? That's going to be regenerative agriculture. And, you know, to be honest with you, it was fresh and new at that point. However, biodynamics is not fresh and new. And, and that's something we got to get into, but that's, that's where, where this goes. But Mercola, we have been part of this for a very long time, but we've made a decision about five, six years ago to go with the biodynamic Demeter route, which we think is the best route. I mean, obviously it's opinion, but um, I, I think it's a strong opinion. And I think it has a lot of backing to it just from, you're talking about a hundred years of proven farming and the original regenerative agriculture. So, mm -hmm. and help me understand why you think biodynamic is the most proven way of regenerative agriculture. I think because it's a hundred years old, um, it it's basically organics was, you know, come, came from the biodynamic standards, right? That's where it stemmed from. Right. Steiner created something so long ago that has been followed. And if you look at it and, you know, I can go back to personal experience, but food is something that I have an obsession with. OK, um, I grew up in uh, uh, Hudson Valley in New York. Um, I actually grew up in New York City, but we moved up when I was like 10, 11 years old up into the Hudson Valley, which is a beautiful place. And the Culinary Institute of America is up there, right? So we would have these great restaurants. And I was a 15 year old kid that got to work at a really high end restaurant as a busboy. I was a busboy and it was the best restaurant. I mean, it was unbelievable. And there were obviously all chefs from the CIA. And, and I got to see food at, at the greatest level, which is absolutely delicious, right? Now, when you go and you start to develop, Later on in life, I got into supplements, into nutri nutraceuticals, and I became an expert, you know, not well, an expert, but that's why I lived in, all right, for many years. And then I worked for Mercola, and then it was the opportunity to go, okay, if you're going to build food, what is the best food you can buy? What's the best food you can make? It is biodynamic, right? So, you know, Daniel Barber, Blue, the Blue Hood Stone Barns in Terrytown. I don't know if you ever heard of that, but that's one of the best restaurants in the world. And it's because he uses biodynamic foods. He puts a biodynamic carrot on a stick and people are like, why does that carrot taste so good? because it's biodynamic because of the soil and in the way it's grown. And, you know, you're taking care of the soil and what you do is you provide the best food. So imagine you can bring the best food in the world and an affordable price to regular people. And that's what we have been able to do through soul spring, which is our, our food brand, which has been, you know, one of the greatest journeys we ever been on. Um, and we're never been more excited because we now have 75 certified Demeter products here at Mercola. Wow. Um, and we were able to bring that through the chain um, in supply more than people realize. Uh, and then 
we took it a step even further is our cotton supply was all organic cotton. We do sheets and towels and mm -hmm. uh, clothing, leggings, and, you know, we do all kinds of different stuff. Um, we always did with organic cotton. So what we did was we found out a way to do, go to these farmers and actually provide them a particular amount of money to transition them to aisle dynamics. So we took the organic farmers, we got them upgraded, changed over, and that allowed us in between stages to have an in conversion Demeter seal. So now all our sheets and towels, uh, I think the towels actually get launched tomorrow. The sheets launched last month. They're all biodynamic, right? So now we have biodynamic cotton, we have biodynamic supplements, we have biodynamic foods. And that's a combination of 75 Demeter certified products. And we're going to keep that going and going and going. And that mission has gone all the way down to where do we do next? So that's where it really gets interesting. And I think that's where um, I love to tell you about some of the things that we're doing is because now it's time to make farmers change over. And the only way yeah. to do that is we have to go to farms and say, hey, why don't you upgrade to biodynamic? The fact that you can have an in-conversion period in between and still promote that, the converting of that land is an absolute beautiful thing. And then, you know, we had a tough time. So we hired a, a biodynamic farmer uh, that works with us as a consultant and he's unbelievable. So he comes to his name is uh, Brian Wickard and he's, he's absolutely fantastic, very, very knowledgeable. And what he was able to do is you know, help, he's helping us bridge that gap because, you know, walking in, sitting down with farmers, like, how do we do this? You know, like, well, Brian can show you how to do it, you know, and just started this program where we're trying to transition farmers in America, because now we need American soil to transition into that regenerative plan. And we think biodynamics is the best way to do it. And that's super powerful, Ryan. I can feel and see and hear your passion. So I'm curious, what was a turning point for you personally, when you knew that there was a different way or a better way than what you were doing? Before I worked for Mercola, um, I was actually a supplier of Mercola for years. And okay. I had the opportunity to, you know, hear what they were doing. And, and I remember them, uh, you know, really fighting for GMO labeling in California. And then they went state to state. And it was a real good battle to really mm -hmm. change the world, the, the way food is done. And, you know, it started to stem my thoughts on, oh my goodness, maybe, you know, I have I had babies, you know, small kids at that time. They're older now, but I mean, not older, but they're nine and 11. But, um, you know, it's like, wow, man, I don't want my kids to eat terrible food. I don't want, you know, I do this. I also grew up in the restaurant. So I'm a I love food. I, I love quality, good food. It's just, it's a passion of mine. So between that, wanting my children to eat right, understanding the GMO uh, labeling movement and understanding what the way food was done made you, when you really pull up the, the veil, it's scary. It's terrifying, actually. Um, and, you know, you think about the processed foods and the GMO foods, and you think about all this different, you know, the different aspects. What happened was when I went to Mercola, they really started that regenerative agriculture because really, you know, the pro the GMO labeling started to, to mature and, and then it became, okay, what about farming as an overall aspect? And our CEO um, is a, uh, he grew up on a, a dairy farm, 600 acres in, in South Dakota. So he's very dedicated to farming as well. I'm, I'm a New York City kid, like I said, in Hudson Valley when I was older. So, so I mean, I, I didn't live in that world. My dad was a fireman, but a uh, New York City fireman. But, um, but it, it doesn't matter. It still stemmed my interest from the aspect of, of good quality food and everything. And, and our goal was to always make the best, you know, best products. So mm -hmm. it was like, okay, how are we going to make the best products? You know, how are we going to bring really quality food? And in theory, it's like, um, it's taking grandma right? My, you know, to say the way grandma used to cook, right? Mm -hmm. Really the biodynamic aspect is almost taking grandma's sauce that she would make and put in a jar in the basement. And, you know, you'd pull it up back in the old days and it was the best sauce you ever had in your life. I mean, we're basically selling that now. Right. And, you know, people are like, oh, sauce, but no, you're taking real, like real attention to detail. The real attention is basically when you take attention to the ingredients, right? Now, the best pizza in the world is because they actually go to the, they go and they mill their own flour, right? They mill their own down to the flour. The tomatoes are pulled off the vine. The cheese is made by the cheese maker. And they're the best pizza places in the world because they 
pay attention to the detail of the way every single thing is grown. So we took that philosophy here at Mercola. We always kept organic and organic is the lowest, you know, we love organic still, you know, it's still a good place, but how do we become regenerative and what is the best options? A lot of people went and broke off and they decided to go build their own standard. And I'm not saying it's not a, not a, you know, it's not a bad standard. It's just for us, it was, well, how are we going to do this? How about a hundred year old standard that has the original regenerative agriculture, the farm is his own ecosystem. It's absolutely beautiful. You need forestry on there. You need animals. You need a little of everything. Everything's about the soil. Everything's about bringing it to the plants and what you're eating. And, you know, it's just a beautiful, beautiful system. And it's been what the greatest wineries, right? In France, they're all biodynamic. Why? Right, right, they can right. raise the bricks and make better product, right? I mean, you know, the best chefs, they cook with biodynamic. Like, why is this food so good? I'm like, because it's grown right. Imagine if you could do that for regular, imagine you can feed that to your kids. I do. I get to feed that to my kids because I'm, I use my own, you know, buy our product, you know, here, there's a jar of tomato sauce made in Italy from the best tomatoes you've ever had They're Why are they so red? Because they're, they're grown in quality soil. And it was soil was being looked at when they were grown. So. Yeah. I, so I'm curious. So it sounds like it, it was um, a progressive journey for you with that. Is yes. that true? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I kind of slowly did it over time and it, it progressed and progressed and progressed and progressed. And then, you know, once I got into it, into a deep, deep place and realized that I can actually think I can, we can get this done. I, to be honest, it didn't happen until, uh, I think it was, was, was 2000, yeah, it was 17, 2017. Um, uh, the Demeter, we were at a trade show and Demeter was at the trade show uh, with the CEO, Steve Ryan, and I, and we sat down and someone said, uh, you know, no one wants to do biodynamics, you know, you know, no one's been ever doing it. We're like, we would love to do it. And like everybody says that, but nobody does it. And it was, if you're interested, you can get on a plane and fly to Germany to Biofoc. And um, it was Elizabeth Calardio, who was the executive director at Demeter at the time, many years ago. And, and uh, I said, okay. So I got on a plane I went and oh, that was, that was it. People are like, nobody, you know, nobody wants this. I'm like, they do want it. You just, nobody's willing to sell it. You know, it, it's, it's not true that they don't want it. We're doing exceptionally well. This brand is, is exploding. It's because the people want quality, good food. And you know what? Is it a little bit more money? It's not that much more money, you know? And, and it really makes a difference in your health and it makes a difference in taste. It makes a difference in so many different things. Mm. When was the first time you tasted a biodynamic food? Um, it was when I went to Germany, for sure. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Olive oil in America, they say, what, 90% is literally adulterated. It tastes like, yeah. you know, it's basically like grape seed, grape seed oil or, you know what I mean? And what's interesting is um, a real olive oil has what we call a polyphenol drip. It's almost like this 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 intensity it's just this stringency it's harsh it's almost hard to get down it almost can make you cough right mm -hmm. that's because that's what a real olive oil should taste like so that that was probably my greatest experience is when i first started they're like try this olive oil i'm like whoa what is wow. that you know and and you know we, our olive oil is absolutely fantastic it's one of our top selling biodynamic products but i remember first bringing it to the product development group here and, and they were like oh this is terrible i'm like it's not terrible. And they're like, I mean, like, that's what it's supposed to taste like, you know? And they're like, but the American palate may not understand this. Right. And that is true, but it isn't true. They actually do. They're starting, they've been educated upon. Once you educate a consumer, and that's the good thing about Marcola is we are a direct to consumer company as the mm -hmm. our business. So that allows us to tell the story to the end consumer. So it, it comes down to is, is once I remember drinking that, I was like, wow, this is unbelievable. Then I got into the pastas. Then I got into the sauces with the pastas because, you know, everyone's there trying. I mean, yeah. our pasta is, you know, it's, it's, it's bronze drawn. It's, it's one ingredient, right? And one ingredient that says Durham semolina wheat. That's it. Mm. And you can taste the difference. It's almost sweet. You can. Yes. All right. All right. Yeah, it's so true. I love that you're the holding space and creating a pathway for farmers to transition to biodynamics. So tell me a little bit more about that. What are the, how are, how is it being received by farmers and how would a farmer 
find you? So, so you know, they can reach out to us, um, you know, and if any farmer is actually interested that's doing organic farming of particular crops, it depends on if we can, you know, what, what crops are, right? I mean, there's some things that we're like, I don't know, man, I don't know if I could, I could sell that, you know, I, you know, but we are, we are creating like, you know, we, we found someone, you know, almonds, like, okay, so if I can get almonds, how many different products can I make with almonds? I can make a ton of stuff, right? So, so, I mean, it ends up being fun. We end up, we have a great product development team um, that, that like, okay, here's almonds. What are we going to do with almonds? We're going to do raw almonds. We're going to do, oh, can we get them chocolate covered? We have biodynamic chocolate now we were able to do. But, you know, it, you know, what can you possibly do with it? But farmers can reach out to us. We basically have built this into a program that we've been working on. It's an ongoing thing because it's, we kind of created it from scratch, obviously. But um, what we're doing is we're looking at farmers um, sitting down and I will tell you that there's there, there was a, there, having a, a farmer with me um, was very important because there was a lot of barriers to break through. One is there's a lot of preconceived notions in regards to biodynamics that it as this, uh, you know, I, I, I said it, uh, or do I have to go out in the moonlight and dance around at night? I'm like, no, <laughs> no, that's not true. That is not true. They're like, oh man, I'm so scared. Like, you know, how do I do this? So there's, there's a couple of things. There was a lot of roadblocks. And one of the number one roadblocks is the preparations, right? Mm -hmm. What a lot of people don't understand is preparations can be purchased by what we call prep makers. So in the biodynamic community, they've created the, the fellowship of prep makers, which is one of the most amazing things I've ever seen. It's a decentralized system where they have a West Coast, a Midwest, and an East Coast division. You could call up as a farmer, a gardener, probably, it doesn't matter. And you can say, hey, uh, you know, to the prep makers, I need prep 500. I need prep 501. I need, you know, I need, uh, you know, 502. And they'll send it right to your house in the mail. They, don't get the, they got the full price. Pricing, you, you name it, they've, they've done it all for you. And they did it in the correct fashion to perfection. Because to be a prep maker, you have to be approved to be a prep maker, right? You have to be part of that group, the, the fellowship. And, and, and they've really done a great job because there's so much passion and it is very hard to do preps, right? It is true. You know, you have to, you have to bury your horns and, you know, they do everything. So, so when we went to farmers and said, hey, you can actually buy these. And they're like, what? That chain right there. Right, yeah, that's number one. Well, wait a minute. I didn't know that. What, what, what else? Like, you know, well, there's a lot to this. It's probably about 10% more work. If you're doing organic farming, it's maybe 10%, maybe a little, you know, a little bit more work. Yes. You have to spray your preparations. You have to add it to your compost. You know, you have your different pieces that you have to do. And, and you know, between that, Taking care of it. Yes. If you don't have animals, you're in the future, you, you want to bring in some animals and start rolling them into your process. But that is just going to help you with, you know, with X. And, you know, what, what I saw was a lot of people's barriers were being broken down. And they said, wow. And it was like, well, how do I stir and all that stuff? And that is where Brian Wickard, who's, in, you know, he really is a great farmer, was like, that's where he comes in. I'm going to come. I'm going to show you how to do the preps. I'm going to show you how to do the sprays. And then you must follow those different preparations, you know, through your certification. You know, Mercola will even send out Demeter to certify the farm, right? And Demeter does a certification. Obviously, they're taught exactly what to do. It takes away that scared feeling. And then that, that very important aspect of a lot of people are like, oh, it's going to take me, you know, two years to, to, to get biodynamic. Well, this in-conversion piece is so important for the future because it will allow us to transition more and more and more and more land because through that transition, you can promote it, right? It's very important. So the end user can say, hey, this land's being transitioned. You're actually buying transitioning land, right? And by the time, you know, was it a year, sometimes two years? Then we'll have 100, won't say in conversion anymore. Now you become a biodynamic Demeter 100% certified product, right? And you were able to promote that in between. The farmers not only are going to have better crop, not only have better soil. However, the other thing too is, yeah, you know, we're paying up, you know, paying a little more money too, right? So they're getting a little bit of uh, more money to, to for their farm, right? Very important. See, this is the deal too, is I tried to explain to someone the other day, I'm like, you know, a you know, little argument about it, but I'm like, let me ask you something. If you have a farmer that 
is going to get a little bit more money for the farm. And they love every aspect that they're making some of the best food they've ever seen in their life. And they have a major pride behind it. Are they going to like live and breathe their farm every day, knowing that this is a great living. This is great food I'm making. My, my land is getting better every day off of this new process. And you know what, you know, I'm, I'm also making, you have to make contracts, right? We have to make a contract. And then there's transparency built in, right? So everyone knows what everyone's doing. So uh, it's not like, oh, uh, I'll just take it at whatever price. I actually have to upfrontly ask, like, what are you going to charge for this? If they're like, oh, is this expensive? I can, I can make it work. Okay. Can I make it work? Let's make a deal. You grow it for me. Here's a contract for the season, so on and so forth. Brian will come in. He'll help you do it. And we, we're building out this process as we speak. Super powerful. What's the big, biggest difference between uh, biodynamic farming and organic farming from your so perspective? The, uh, regeneration. Yeah. Right. So really it comes down to regeneration. So if you want to regenerate land, all right, organic farming, I'm not saying it's a bad process, right? It's still good. All right. Okay. It's just, it's, it's where, where we want to start at. Right. And basically the, the issue is it's not going to allow you to regenerate that soil on a consistent basis and make better quality food and better land and, you know, reduce, it won't, it won't, you know, it will, it will have some effect. I mean, I want to say that because, you know, people are like, what well, you say, zero effect? No, but it's not going to be fully regenerative. All right. And that is a major difference between the two. Right. I mean, you can spray some pesticides and insect. There's certain things that you're allowed to do in organics. You know? Yes. And organics is still not using the harsh, harsh, harsh chemicals. Right. The they're, they're not. They're not. But but in biodynamics, it's very particular. You must use your 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 farm as an ecosystem. You must mm -hmm. live within that farm. Nature is your your way of healing right and and you know people are like oh that's that's great i'm like it's actually not it it does work and you know to hear stories of some of these farmers they're like you know um uh, uh brian will tell me uh brian wickard has told me some great stories and one of the great stories he told me was um he went to the farmer next to him and he he put a stake and he said give me this side this acreage and i'm going to spray it and you're going to grow on your other side it was organic on one side you know, biodynamic on the other, he did the sprays and preparations, you know, it really the sprays is the most important part, right? Preparations are for your compost. But he said there was, he came back and uh, the, the one guy's brother came and visited the farm and goes, what did you do to that field? And he's like, I spray, you know, because you could actually see the difference side by side because these, these practices work. They, they've been around for a hundred years. That is, yeah. a that's where I get on the hundred years is, is something that's been around this long. Why was it not proven? I mean, it is proven. It's been proven around the world. I mean, Demeter is an international standard. We get, you know, you go to Brazil, Demeter is massive. All right. That's and, right. Yeah. You know, you, you go, you go to India, it's absolutely massive. You go to Europe, it's massive. In America, it's a very tiny community and it needs to grow. And 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 I think that that because this has been built out. In, in, in this in the in the, the practices the their stories there's so many people to help you because they've been doing it for so long the knowledge has been passed down for so long this is a this is the best possible opportunity we have for regenerative agriculture in my opinion oh that's so powerful and I love how you uh frame organics as being a baseline to build upon yeah. and so it's it's a beautiful place to start and what i'm hearing the biggest difference is is um biodynamics is really an ecosystem within itself and you're using the biodynamic preparations as a spray right and so in nature yeah in nature you're really really working with nature learning from nature so yeah, you don't you know. have any other inputs in the farm, like there's no blood meal or bone meal or no, um, the, the inputs must be from the farm, right? right? I mean, you know, and and that's you know, it, it it's it's a very, very uh it, it's it's all, it's very simple, but I'm sorry, mm -hmm. but the best things in this world are always simple, right? I mean, you know, the simplistic aspect of it, and you know, I know the preparations aren't very simple because they they're not. I mean, I got the opportunity to 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 help do preparations to see what it's like. It's very, very difficult, time consuming. I mean, you must let, you know, uh, you know, uh, some of these things sit, you know, over seasons and, and then, you know, do you dig them up out of the ground? I mean, you know, there's a lot of work to it, but, but that work is how you make your land 
so fruitful so make that soil so fruitful it takes a lot of work to get there you know and, and it's 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 that's with anything anything takes a lot of work that's good so mm. and what do you feel like um the biggest barriers or challenges are for uh, farmers who aren't even at the um, space of entertaining the organic way of farming, wh what are the what are the biggest barriers for them to move into biodynamics? It's the protection of the subsidies. It's protection mm -hmm. of understanding that you can just go and plant. You know, I I had uh, I think a couple months ago we did a you know going to farms I I drove through Iowa for the first time in my life. What it is is gigantic plastic stalks that look like they've been had a perfect haircut as far as you can see, and I you don't see anything alive, right? Well, everything on the side of the road is burnt looking it's because it's dead from chemicals and and you know what these gigantic combines come in and they you know they have a guy that literally puts them on GPS, presses a button and just you know just collects and collects and collects and this massive monocropping is subsidizing into this system that is very scary and it makes you say okay i have this automatic money coming in my land is constantly going to be used why would i want to go and do this other stuff and it's like because eventually that soil is going to have a tougher and tougher and tougher and tougher and tougher time and if you go and actually get yourself maybe out of this system, you could work with people that maybe pay you more money for your crop. You can get more diversity. You can sell different crops. And through the biodiversity, you can get different dollars for these different pieces. And you know what? You might be able to build a farm that can regenerate and last much longer. And if you're in it for the long run, which we all have to think about the long run, everyone's too short run thinking, you're going to actually win in the long run. And if you think about some of these farmers that have switched to regenerative models like Gabe Brown and, and, you know, I mean, some of the ranchers like Will Harris and White Oak Pastures, I'm lucky is, is my supermarket sells his stuff. So I get to eat it. It's, you know, th these are, th these guys made decisions a long time ago and it seemed like a tough decision and it was, and it was the right, right, right decision. Mm -hmm. And what do you say though to, um, because it's vulnerable making this shifts, right? It's really vulnerable. Oh, it's got, I mean, listen, I, I'm not a farmer. I can't imagine it, but I know that, you know, listen, you, you just get by every day. I know Steve, our CEO, you know, grew up in a farm. So, you know, he was like, yeah. you don't understand, man. Every day you just, you know, you just get, you know, everybody's working, you know, you know, you do what you got to do to try to shift anything and say that I'm going to have to, you know, you also, not only is it risk, but it's also, you know, you know, and change is not good for anybody. It's not, it's not easy for anybody. I'm not saying it's good, not good for anybody. I should say it's not easy for anybody. So, yeah. yeah. I'm curious if you have, like, I'm curious about the why farmers are transitioning. So, um, because I think that the more we connect to what motivates us and what our values are and um, what pulls us towards that next uh, step, the more we're connected to that, the more successful we can be, even through the really, really hard times and the transitions and the adversity. So I'm curious what um, what's motivating the farmers that you're working with to make the transition to biodynamics? Why are they doing it? You know, I, I got an answer for that because I saw it in, in, in everyone's face. And, and it's actually, um, it's uh, um, promising, I say is the fact that they can have better land like it would improve their land it was the it wasn't the dollars because we, we don't know dollars right you don't know yet it's the fact that the 10 percent more work could make you have better product produce more like perfect example is like you know in in, in grapes you have higher bricks content right Right. That's why the wine industry is in it. Right. You literally raise your bricks content. You make better wine. Right. More, more sugar. Right. What happened about a berry farmer? When we, we went to a berry farmer, they were like, oh, man, I wonder if I could probably raise the bricks and the berries then, too. We're like, I don't know. Well, I guess they were like, wow, this is amazing. I mean, think about it like the, they're starting to think, wow, I could just do these simple practices that have been around for a very long time. I already you know, some of these guys have, have loved their land so much. They've already been 
almost using these beautiful practices and not even thinking about if they just did a couple more things, they can become biodynamic. And, and those additions of these sprays and the preparations, you know, five, 500 and 501 specifically, you know, 500 is for, um, uh, your, you know, your soil. And then when it's popping up, you spray your silica, which is your five, uh, I'm sorry, 500 is, is, uh, the manure, I'm sorry. And the 501 is the silica. And, and those, those particular ones are the ones that you really see a true difference. And, um, they, they get excited. I, I I've seen it firsthand many times now, cause we've been going all different places. And, um, you know, and that's one thing that Brian Wicker will always say is like, say when they see the difference, Ryan, when you actually show the difference, like once they try it and they even know it, it's, 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 it's invigorating, right? You know, it makes you think, wow, what else can I do with this? You know? And, um, you know, that, and, and a lot, a lot of people were afraid. So the idea that you had someone coming in to show them how to do something that's new because change is hard and trying to figure it out, who has time to figure things out, you know, you're just making it. So if someone can come and show you exactly what to do, Okay. Break down prices. We can even help, you know, that's the other thing too, is, is, you know, here's what your labor would be by doing it. This is, you know, you gotta, if you can provide that to them too, this is what it's going to take. This is what it's going to cost. This is what we're willing to commit to. And this is what the price we can pay if that's acceptable to, you know, it, it all takes away all those different roadblocks and the fact that they can make their soil better at the same time. And that crop is going to go no matter what it's, it was huge. And that's what we're working on now, actively. Yeah, that's really powerful. Another piece I'm curious about is that farmer who's, and you may or may not have the be delved into this. I think you're aware of it, but I don't know if you have a device for this. I'm curious though, for that farmer who has been monocropping for years, maybe decades, for a very, very long time. And so they're really, um, they're locked in. They're locked, literally, they feel locked in to the system of farming. And they're also curious about um, how to make that transition. So I'm wondering, you know, maybe the, fir- maybe the first step, maybe there's no room for that farmer to be brought into the Mercola fold. Um, and maybe there is. And whether there is or n- isn't that opportunity i'm wondering where do they start you know do they do they start with um where do they start getting information about what their first steps might be who do they um tap into to learn more about this so i mean demeter demeter usa has a lot of different resources i believe they created something called the demeter alliance which now they're trying to build out a larger network, which is, which is great, you know, and um, they have different, you know, different pieces to it. They have the economic, cultural, and then they have a certification body. I mean, I would say that if somebody is actually interested in doing any kind of biodynamic farming or transitioning their land in any which way, I mean, a, a call into Demeter USA and just, hey, can I ask you some questions, how I can do this? You know, what, what, what can be done? I'm very interested. They could give you an array of information that, you know, we've even set farmers up that we weren't able to work with where we put them on the phone with, with Everett and, you know, Everett's like, okay, how are you farming today? And it's like, this is how I'm farming today. Okay. Okay. So, you know what, if we want to be certified, you would have to make these particular changes, you know, this is what you could do. And it's like, okay. And you know, half the time, like I said, some of these farmers, which we weren't able to work, they're at, some of them were too large for us. You know, I, I, I can only take so much. There's no, there's no other end users, you know? And it was like, I, I, w- I wouldn't be able to take that much, you know? And, and what it comes down to is what we found was some of these farmers, the practices were so good. These organic farmers, that they were very, very close, like I said. And they're like, wow, that's why I got to change up. And they're like, yeah, you know, you, you can't use this. You can't use that. You need to do this. They're like, well, I can go here and get that. That's no problem. I can change here. I can, you know, and what you don't realize is, you know, sometimes picking up that phone and maybe if you feel like you have a very, very good system, maybe there's, you know, maybe you're closer than you think. They just have to ask. Yeah. What excites you the most about moving towards more Demeter biodynamic certified land and farmers um i mean it's it's truly our mission is i i mean i really you know and mercola you know dr mercola transition to land in america you know it, it's we always wanted to build a supply chain in 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 you know this country is just such a different world <laughs> 
So, so, you know, we know it's going to be difficult, but, but this is the system. If it can change here, we can change, you know, we can change everywhere because this is going to be the hardest place to change on a large level. Um, and, you know, listen, I, I don't care what anyone says. The only way truly things start is in the grassroots aspect of small and we can build as we go. You know, anyone that thinks you're going to start from the top down in changing those farming systems. Ah, listen, have you ever seen these powerful organizations that you'd be going against? They are Goliaths that do not mess around. And if they say they want to go do it, they could say whatever they want. They'd be like, I'll do it, but we're going to do it in 2050. Are they going to do it in 2050? You know, is that really going to happen? You know, so what we need to do is now, right now, make the change. If it's on a small level, every single small acre is a win. And we just build and we build and we build. And you build one acre at a time if you have to, 10 acres, is it 100 acres? That'll be great. You know, and we keep going, we keep going, we keep going. And other people will follow because they will see what we're doing, right? Other brands are going to go into this world in a, in a, more and more. You'll see it. It's, it's going to happen. It's inevitable. And, you know, they may be doing, you know, ROC, which I'm not, you know, that's fine. You know, regenerative organic, you know, certification. It's also a great certification, but on the Demeter side, I think that, that there's truly something here with a hundred year old proven standard that we all know works. We don't need to recreate the wheel here. It's been created and been developed over a hundred years. What's the hardest part about making that shift in a bigger way, in a bigger level? Um, I, Honestly, it's, it's, you know, we're one brand, right? So, you know, like I said, you know, if I want to farm as 150 acres, you know, and I take 150 acres or something, I am, you know, I, you know, it's, we have 1400 products at Mercola. We have a lot of products. Okay. Um, we've been around for 25 years, you know, and yes, we do, we sell a lot of product, but you know, I can't be like, I need, you know, if they can't sell it to me, they need to sell it to somebody else too. You know, right? And what's going to happen is if I can take X right, the rest would have to be sold organic. Right. And they can have no choice because I can only take X the best of my ability, you know? So that's where you come down to is you need more brands to step up into the biodynamic world. Right. That's what we need. We need more people being willing to dive in and say we want regenerative agriculture as a standard. And we've been able to do it in the supplement world, too, which people don't realize. Do you know how much crop is used in the supplement world? It's massive. So that, you know, textile. So we're, if we hit on all the different areas, we could try to cross, you know, use use you know this product and a supplement. And then you also use it. We've done that. Like, you know, we have cinnamon tablets, you know, it's like, oh, no, should we sell cinnamon in a jar too? Why not? Mm -hmm. We got cinnamon tablets, right? Cinnamon tablets are a really big supplement, right? So we do both, you know, moringas and, you know, there's different, different things. That's so cool. So Ryan, um, you were also recognized as a top 40 under 40 in business what was it or what was the business business observer yeah in the business observer and um i'm curious what you feel um like what was the difference that made the difference for you to be recognized as a top 40 under 40 um you know i, I would be honest with you this world of regenerative agriculture is, sounds funny but that wasn't it. It was more of just, you know, I've been doing this. I, I grew up in this industry, actually. Um, wasn't just in the, in the, uh, in, the uh, in the restaurants. It wasn't that. It was uh, um, uh, when I was a kid, my uncle owned a company called RFI and, and RFI. Um, I worked there in the warehouses when I was a kid and I filled samples for the nutraceutical industry because that's what he was in. And, and then when I got out of food. I used to sell food to restaurants and, and then I went into uh, working with him and then I really got into development and product development and manufacturing and marketing of products and was able to go and take that into this private label world, right? And then I got into Mercola and I've been in Mercola now for eight years and I've had many different positions. And, um, you know, I've been, I'm only 40 years old. And, well, actually, I'm sorry. I turned 41 last week, but, um, but, but, uh, uh, with that, 
I have uh, quite experience in, in this. I've been doing this for 15 years, actually. So at 40, that's, that's not bad. So I think that's where I got that recognition. I've just been doing this quite a bit of time here for uh for for being at 40 and the regenerative agriculture aspect is really what the true passion is i have now for the last five years but you know i don't think people see that yet it's because it's still new <laughs> it's like i'm coming to talk to you you know i we don't talk to many people about this stuff now we're starting to really come out and be like hey we've been doing this for a long time yes. you know? yeah yeah 25 years is a long time that's really cool so what I'm curious about the 40 under 40 part, um, Ryan, though, is like what your superpowers are as a leader, yeah. what are your superpowers in the regenerative agriculture space and and um, how are you bringing those values or what drives you to expanding the Mercola brand and also really raising the awareness around regenerative agriculture? No, um, I guess you could say as a leader, one of the things I'm, you know, you know, I get things done. How's that? That's, mm -hmm. that's one of the things, you know, a lot of people, we don't, we're not talk. We mm -hmm. do things, right? We say we're going to do it. We follow through with it. We push it. We get it done. And I use the word in that article and business observer is I don't believe in, uh, I, I believe in perfection can be divided over time, right? But if you want to build something, you need to be able to make mistakes, <laughs> You need to push forward with something and then, you know, you, you, you fix it over time. Right. And, you know, you start here and, and you, you know, you may launch something and it'll be like, well, this is a mess. I'm like, no, it's not. We're learning now. Change this. Let's change that. Let's change this. You admit like it's, it's not about being wrong. It's about shifting and pivoting. And if you want to change a system, right. Which we're doing right now is this system is not going to be perfect right now. And that's what I said to you is that the program that we're building is an ongoing program, because what we're going to do is we're going to go out there. We're going to work with farmers. We're going to figure out where the holes are and things that maybe didn't work. And we're going to, improve them and get them better and better and better and that is the way i like to lead too is is say okay let's go forward let's get this you know what if if this goes wrong that's all right we're gonna this is plan b this is how we're gonna pivot you have to pivot through and actually make sure you get to the end goal because if you're gonna say you're gonna do something you you have to do you have to follow through and that following through means you're gonna make mistakes admit to those mistakes fix those mistakes and build and build and build and name one good thing that's perfected perfect when you launch it it doesn't exist and if you want that you're going to lose so mm, love that so powerful and i think as because i think as of farmers as leaders and unseen and unsung leaders and um i think that's great advice for farmers i mean it's the same the way with soil right you're going to start mm -hmm. x and you're going to make changes to groove and and if you don't just constantly make those changes and you just sit there and say i'm only do one thing forever or, it doesn't work, right? And you make those changes and it just gets better and better. It stacks on top of each other. Yeah. And as somebody who is sourcing products, what advice would you have for farmers selling their product to a brand? You know, is the missions and values, do they truly align? You know, are they selling you something that's not real? Because I've seen it seen it right i know regenerative agriculture many years ago was supposed to be really 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 big with general mills and they were took over expo west um and they had regenerative agriculture on four like it was everywhere um and they launched a product it was uh amy was it not amy's uh annie's macaroni and cheese but you know what it said on the box limited edition all right because it was a limited edition and guess what? It's a collector's item at this point, right? So because you have, you know, those farmers probably had some very good feelings here, but really what they did was they used that as a marketing piece, but did they end up doing it with, no, you know, we have to, we have to realize like, I'm selling product. I want to buy product. I want to sell the product. You know what I mean? Like, like I want it as soon as you can give it to me, you know, you know, and I'm not saying all brands aren't going to do that, but if they're like, Hey, you know, what, what is their true intentions here? You know, <laughs> and you got to, you got to be up front, up front on what you're looking for. Don't be afraid to ask for something. Just ask how much crop I need you to take. Right. Right. This, uh, I, I want a contract. Okay. Do you want a contract? Okay. I, I will, uh, uh, what happens if the crop goes bad? 
It's a question that needs to be asked and must be agreed upon by both sides, right? All right. What happens? Uh, uh, here's the price point that I'm looking for. Farmer says that, right? Now, it could go both ways. Most of the brands are going to try to always get cheap, right? But is that acceptable to me? I will have to be honest. Like I, some, I usually say, can I make it work? You know, and that's because our goal is to make sure that we try to, you know, we try to help, right? We want to help every everybody. Win. Everyone needs to win. Was, you want to be in a win-win situation as a brand and a farmer. You got to be. You got to be. Or it's not a good relationship. Everything must be long-term win-win. All right. So if they're going to win because they're going to make great crop and we're going to help them transition and, you know, we're going to say, OK, and they're like, this is the price point I need. I may even still have to come back as a brand and say, I can't sell it at that price, but I could sell it at this price. And then might be like, actually, that's still good. We, we can still make that work. Here we go. We all work together. We got fairness. All right. It's it works. It's it's laid out in front of them. All right. I think that is the key. They must ask the questions. Never be afraid. Don't be afraid of losing anything. Be upfront and honest. And that's it. Otherwise, you know, you're going to you're going to have a, a false, a, a false, you know, feeling and, 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 and you know, things could fall apart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's great advice. And Mercola is celebrating 25 years. Yes. Yeah. We've been around for 25 years. Yes. Yeah, so, and that's what people don't realize. We've been around a long time. Yeah. Yes, you have. Yeah, you have. Um, I'd love to know is. Um, what have been, what are some of your biggest wins as a company um, in the organic and health, healthy living and healthy well-being space? I mean, I, our largest win is, is, I think, Soul Spring. I mean, period. I mean, you know, we, we've been able to build a food brand, I mean, from scratch, from scratch. And, and we didn't even name it Dr. Mercola. We named it Soul Spring. We created something new and fresh. And soul is, you know, obviously for, for the sun and springs for new life. And we put it together. We called it Soul Spring. And, uh, you know, it was a concept. And, and it turned into something, I think, beautiful at this point. And we are just keep going and going and going. And we have so many products we're about to come out to. And, um, uh, you know, it's just, it feels good to have such a high quality you know, uh, a mission-based brand based around regenerative agriculture, 100-year-old standard, and we've been able to do it. And to be honest, we were told, ain't gonna, you know how many times we were told this is not going to work? That we're, you know, to be honest, you're crazy, Ryan, you know? And it's like, no, no, like no one wants anything. No one will ever buy this is what I was told. No one will ever buy it. And we're like, not true. Not true. I think you're wrong. And it was five, six years ago, and it did take a long time, but... But here we are now, and and it's a whole nother world. So clearly, they had not um, met you or your tenacity. And what's most meaningful to you about the work that you're doing? Oh, I mean, in a way, it's changing. You know, changing the way. You know, changing the way farming could be done for the future, and in on multiple different facets. It's not just a brand and selling it, but it's also helping the standards here and how those standards can go up. So in this dietary supplement world, one of the interesting things is, um, you know, they came in with something called NDIs, which made, made the industry a little bit unique now, right? So the only way to innovate within this world is the innovation has been reduced a little bit, but you can innovate through standards is what we thought, right? So that's what we're doing, right? We're innovating through standards, taking, taking things and taking them higher and higher and higher so people can get the best of the best. And you can get that through, you know, our innovation standards, basically. And we've done it in food, supplements, textiles, biodynamic textiles. I mean, everything down the board here. So, And why is that important to you personally? Um, it's, it's just a, it's, it's been a passion. I don't know. I've always wanted to make change, right? Don't we all? You know, so I feel like I come to work and I guess I'll make change now. Right. So it's, you know, that age old thing. Everyone's like, I want to, I want to do something. I want to, I want to work towards something. And I, I truly feel like we're doing that here in Ola and, and I'm proud of it. And I know most of, you know, our team, they're very proud of it. They're very proud to be part of this, this, this new innovative approach towards food, supplements, textiles, and it's going to reverberate across. It is. Yeah, it really is. You can already see it and feel it happening. So I'm deeply grateful for the work that you're doing, Ryan, and i um, been Thank a big you. fan of Dr. McCullough's for a really long time. And it's exciting to see him gathering such strong, 
beautiful humans on his team to support his vision and now your company's vision and your vision and um, really as stewards of the earth and for humanity. So thank yeah, you, you know, I, I'm thank you. Yeah, it's nothing. Nothing makes me prouder. You know, I, he's he's allowed you know, allowed me to come here and work here. And, you know, listen, he's had the visions from regenerative agriculture for so long and mm. to see it really come to life. I mean, I can't, I mean, he was even longer, you know, before me, you know, you know, so, I mean, to see, you know, he actually gets to take his own products that are built around that regenerative agriculture. It's got to be amazing. So. Yeah. It's so cool. Well, I'm very excited about the launch of soul spring and, the amplification and the deeper understanding that you're bringing to Demeter and biodynamics and what it's all about and how regenerative it is and how it goes back a hundred, hundred, hundred years. And, um, yeah. that it's a, a certification and verification program that is doable, attainable, works with nature. And it's, um, just, it is one of the best. It's, you know, it's hard. It almost sounds fake when you say it's been around a hundred years, but it has. Yeah. Well, yeah yeah well, but it has so thank you thank you for your time today ryan thank you very much natalie have a great day yeah thanks you too grateful you joined us for that conversation and interview if you haven't subscribed to heart and soil magazine yet head over to heart and soil magazine.com click on that subscribe button and join us for just $39.99 a year. You make yourself an amazing day and I'm really grateful you're part of our community.